if you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm a great lover of vintage containers and anything I can collect in a secondhand shop, car boot sale or junk fair of any description. And today I'm going to use this really heavy based vase that I picked up. Um, I don't think it's antique, I don't think it's anything expensive, but I really like the shape and the interesting texture that's on the front. And it's quite heavy, so I thought it would be ideal to create a design in this using wire mesh rather than floral foam. So it's a far more sustainable and environmentally friendly option. Normally this would be filled with water, but because I'm going to be tipping it forward for you to see at the moment, it's empty. But what I've done is I've created almost like a sausage sort of shape, rolled piece of wire mesh. So I've probably rolled it so that I have three, maybe four layers of the wire mesh. This one is probably about an inch gauge. And this is a Wilkinson's one. So if you're here in the UK, you might be familiar with the shop Wilkinson's. What I like about this is it's plastic coated. So it's much easier to work with. It's far more pleasant on your hands. You don't scratch yourself, you don't cut your fingers. And it's also better for the flowers. And it has the benefit of being able to be washed and sterilized and reused again. Now I can see with this container that there's some floral fix on the top. So it's obviously been used by somebody for flower arranging at a previous time. So it's really lovely to be able to create a different type of design in it. Now, the reason I've taken the wire mesh all the way to the bottom of my container is for stability. So the top bit doesn't swing around and I've made it slightly fatter on the top. And that's the main section that's going to hold my flowers. I'm going to be using some dried foliage, a few dried grasses, things that I've collected through the summer and the autumn, as well as fresh flowers, some from the supermarket, some from the florist supplies. And what's good about that choice is that the fresh flowers obviously have to be in the water supply. You have to get the stems right down to the bottom. But the dried material doesn't have to be all the way to the base. So it leaves more room in the container for your fresh flowers. That's not always achievable, but it's something that's an option. And if you've got lots of dried material at the home, it's a good way of mixing the two together. And I'm gonna start with some alder. Now this is a tree native here in the UK. And um, at the moment, if you're driving around, you'll see it on the side of the road. It has a lovely cone on it during the winter. And then we've got these lovely catkins that are coming now as we come into the spring. And I've chosen a piece that's probably just roughly twice the height of my container. Doesn't have to be perfect, but the container is visually very heavy. It's quite dominant. So we need to draw our eye away and create quite a statement piece with our flowers. And the colors work beautifully with the base. The brown tone of the bark there is picking up really lovely on that textured container. Now I've already removed a lot of the offshoots, a lot of the branches there from the bottom so that I know when I place it into the container, I've got a clean stem that's going to sit really nicely through the wire mesh. Now it takes a little bit of practice getting the flowers in. You've almost got to sort of spin and rotate the stem to work it through the chicken wire. And you've almost got to let the flowers speak for themselves. Now what I don't really like about this positioning of my first material is it's a bit too straight. So I'm just going to take it out a little way or even all the way and I'm going to angle it in from the side instead and I think it's going to suit the shape of this branch a lot better. It's going to come in sideways, it's a little bit fiddly it's going to come in sideways and by moving that just that slight little position means that the branch hangs more elegantly in the container and you can appreciate those catkins as they hang down from the branch. Now one thing I think is quite important when you're working with chicken wire or wire mesh is that you don't try and create those very symmetrical designs. It's quite hard to get triangles and L shape because you aren't capable of getting the position in without using floral foam. So what you've almost got to think of is that the shape of the stems and the branches dictates the shape of the arrangement. If you have lots of materials that are arching in one particular angle, and for me, I have lots of this larch that has a natural swing to 
what is my left as I'm looking at it, then I'm going to use that shape to create my design. So I've gone a little bit asymmetrical and I do tend to do this a lot when I'm working with wire mesh. I tend to end up with more emphasis of flowers and foliages on one side. But I think we've got to get away from those geometric shapes that we've been taught for many, many years. Now I'm going to leave the chicken wire visible as I'm working so that you can understand how the design comes together. Probably at this stage, I would fill in with some compact greenery, maybe some ivy or a pittosporum, something that's bushy and quite thick. But for today, I'm going to leave that visible for as long as I can. Now we have got a design that is asymmetrical, it's longer on one side than the other. And you've obviously got to remember that to get your material into the water, you have to bring the stem ends down quite low. So if I was to use this piece, it's quite straight and it's going to have to go in a position where it's going to be quite straight in the arrangement. But I'm using this towards the back because that will help create a little bit of visual weight at the back as well as actual weight and it will help hold my container in position. I won't get that sort of wobbly effect. To bring some material towards the front, I'm going to use another piece of the lark. So we've got a really nice structure in there. I've got some height, I've got width and I've got depth running from front to back and that's the basics of any floral design. This is going to be front facing so we're only going to see it from the camera angle that you're looking at it from now. So other than cover that chicken wire and to bring some weight to the back of the arrangement. I don't need to worry too much about adding anything decorative there at the back. Now I've got some wonderful dried bracken and I love in the autumn and through the winter being able to use the dried bracken. The colour is just wonderful and it links beautifully with the textured pattern on my container. And the beauty of this is that because it's dried it doesn't have to go all the way into your foam, and I'm not even using foam. It doesn't need to go all the way into the base of your container. So you can sit different size pieces into the wire mesh without worrying about it going all the way to the bottom to the water source. This is going to add some gorgeous texture, beautiful selection of colour and a fabulous link between my container. Another benefit of working with the wire mesh is that if you don't like the piece of material that you've put in, you can quite easily remove it and add it in in a different position. But straight away I've got something very rustic, quite natural and very much on vogue at the moment. Isn't that lovely? And I could quite easily just add a few little bits of material to the base to cover that wire mesh and leave it as it is without adding any flowers. Right, now I've got a couple of other materials that I've dried from the autumn and the summer. And the difference with these is that they are very regimented and very straight. I'm hoping you can still see me. So these are bulrushes and again, fabulous colour link with the bracken and the container, but they are very rigid. So if we were to use all of these very rigid bulrushes, the design would become very stiff and quite stagnant. There wouldn't be any softness or any movement in the arrangement. But they do give a lovely upward movement, a nice vertical line in the arrangement, which is going to contrast really well against the soft alder branches that I've already got in the arrangement. And I'm not worried again about making it symmetrical, so I don't need to have even numbers on either side. Because they're dried, there's no worry about them going directly into the water source itself. Now you could continue like that with some dried hydrangeas, dried status that you might have from the summer, but I am going to introduce some fresh flowers at this stage. And I've gone with quite a pale colour combination, again because I wanted it to link with the base and the colours that were in the base. Let's just slightly move this out of the way. Um, and you might have seen these in a previous arrangement. This is a single carnation. It's a very soft apricotty cream sort of colour. And I'm very much restricted by the straightness of the stem. You can see with this one, the head is slightly angled over to what is my left. So I'm going to make use of that 
on the left hand side of the arrangement. Now I need to remember that I have to work the carnation all the way to the bottom so that it's in the water source but because it's got that slight curve it's following that same natural shape as the larch or even alder. I'm going to do the same with the next one. Now one mistake I often make when I'm creating designs in foam and it's a, probably a good tip to pass on to you is that I often cut the flowers too short. We're so used to cutting the flowers short because we have that block of foam to rely on to lift the flowers and to give us the height. You don't want to do it in this particular design because you need to have as much stem length as possible. Now this one could work on either way, to the left or to the right, but I would like some movement and colour of the carnation on this side. You know, I'm going to be very much restricted by the way the chicken wire is going to hold that flower into place. But what I'm trying to do is to get the colour to sweep through from one side to the other. I wouldn't, I really wouldn't worry too much about it with this style of arranging. It's not formal, it's very relaxed, it's appreciating the way the flowers have grown and the shape of the stem. And you've just got to work all your flowers in to create sudden type of very informal shape. What's happening at the moment is my flower stem is just hitting the chicken wire so I just need to swivel it around until it sits in a position that I want it to go. The colour at the moment is quite high and all the way to the top part of the arrangement so I need to start bringing it down more towards the base and this is where I can now start cutting them shorter Remember also to remove any of the greenery, any thorns that you might have so that the water stays as clean as possible and we don't get contaminated flower stems. And I think I'm going to use this as the last flower. So I've created a little bit of a staggered asymmetrical line through from the one side to the other. But if we look at it from the side, I don't have any colour towards the back. And I know it's a front facing arrangement and you're not going to see the back. But I'm going to use this final one, which will help create depth. From the front of the arrangement, your eye will pick up on this flower towards the back and it'll give that three dimensional effect to the arrangement. Isn't that lovely? Quite happily leave it like that. A large darker leaf at the base, maybe a begonia leaf would look fantastic. But I'm going to introduce one more flower type and this is a supermarket lily. Pale, very much in keeping with the colour combination that I've got in the arrangement at the moment. And these are just going to give the design a little bit of base weight, so they're going to draw your eye down into that focal point. Um, they're quite open, so I don't want to use them too high because It'll draw your eye upwards and I think I'm going to benefit from having them down lower. You'll see I'm having a little bit of a battle getting them in and that's really because my vase is quite narrow and I now don't have a lot of room in the neck of the vase to keep adding more flowers. So I think two of these is going to be ample. And what you really need to remember with this type of arranging is the more flowers you force into the vase, the less chance they've got of surviving. There'll be a fight for the water. There won't be enough water to keep them alive. The stems will get squashed. They'll get slimy and bacteria will grow on them very quickly. So minimize your choice and your selection of greenery and flowers. And other than filling in at this stage and making sure that that wire mesh is covered in this section here, I think I'm pretty much done. If I wanted to, I could bring another lily towards the back there, but I don't think it's gonna be needed. I'm thinking that if this goes up against a wall, I don't want to have too many flowers at the back there that will possibly get damaged. I have got one very soft grass which has been dried to add into the arrangement as well. They're quite vertical, quite, you know, very rigid in their appearance, but it does bring in a lovely texture. And because I don't have to get these right the way to the bottom, I can almost bring them sort of 
um, horizontally through the center of my wire mesh and I'm going to cluster these together probably three on one side and maybe one on the opposite side but a great way of introducing another texture and a lovely interesting color so that's my final piece of grass there in the arrangement and now it's just a case of adding a little bit more of the dried bracken just around the base so that we can't see that wire mesh they don't have to be huge pieces just a very simple selection there on the bottom and if you're limited with the choice of material that you have then you might want to consider that mesh going a little bit lower in the arrangement at the bottom very much like floral foam you need to cover your mechanics now one of the spare pieces of bracken I've got has that lovely curve to it so I am going to just introduce that give me a little bit of a stronger position on my right hand side the last few pieces of bracken really down low to cover that wire mesh and while I'm doing that I'm going to let you know that we've got a course an online course is due to start it won't be until the sort of start of the summer we're in the end of January at the moment but we're looking to do a probably a 10 or a 5 week course which is going to use environmentally friendly mechanics so there'll be no floral foam in there at all we're going to look at using chicken wire and wire mesh so if you're interested in that there will be a link in the box below and you can join me later on in the year when the garden flowers and there's a lot more choice available from our locally grown providers so what do we think a beautiful design very very much on vogue at the moment the style of arranging is really very fashionable at the moment and i hope you've enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so hit that notification bell if you want to be told every time i upload a new video and like and comment in the box below because it will really help other people find the channel and let me know what you would like to see and where you're watching me from because i always find that very fascinating so thanks for watching and goodbye for now.